Morning Overflow Church. We are so excited that you're here with us this morning. Please stand and join together with us for a time of celebration. to Overflow Church, where we hope to inspire others to live out of the overflow, and that's only through a relationship with Jesus. And from the Lord's of it looks like we're overflowing in here. Can we get that new building already? Come on now. Amen. Well, welcome. We're so excited to have you guys here. Church, can you help me welcome our online audience in as well into the house? From wherever you're watching, honored to have you with us. 
And if this is your first time with us, we are especially excited and honored that you've chosen to worship with us today. And we would love to get connected with you. So on the seat back in front of you, there's a card that looks just like this, or you can scan the QR code. This is our opportunity to, to connect with you, uh, share a little bit about who we are, maybe answer any questions you might have. But if you will fill this out and take it to our back table at the end of the service, we will give you a free gift. Just say thank you for joining us in worship today. Now, if you have a prayer request, church, we want to pray for you and have a team dedicated to doing that. You can fill it out on the back of this card and our team will pray with you and for you. Uh, if you make the decision for Christ today, we want to celebrate with you. We also want to put some resources in your hands. So if you do that, you can fill it out on this card. Uh, that way we can just get connected with you, celebrate with you, pray for you. Whatever we need to do, we're going to do because we want to connect with you. Now, we have a lot happening here in the life of our church. This past weekend, we had our OC Women's Conference. Ladies, where you at if you were there? We had over 250 women in the house. We had over 28 churches represented. Amen. And we had some powerful speakers. God moved this weekend. So if you were not plugged in with OC Women, get plugged in, ladies. You're missing out. This is a phenomenal ministry we love, and this is a great time to get involved with them. Now, we have some things coming up we want to share with you guys. Now, we are at four services. Just a reminder, we're going to be at that for until we go to five services, right? <laughs> Amen. We're excited about the growth that's happening here in the life of our church. So just a reminder, we do have four services. So find the service that fits for you, 8, 9, 30, 11, or 12, 30. Uh, but, man, we're excited about what God's doing here in the life of our church. Now, on Mother's Day, which is coming up, man. Mother's Day is coming up. So on Mother's Day, is something special we do every year is baby and child dedications. This is an opportunity. If you want to dedicate your child, say, I want to raise them to follow Jesus. Uh, this is something we do in front of everybody. We do it here on stage just to honor them, to dedicate them uh, to God. So if you feel called to do that, we would love to get you signed up. You can email us, connect at overflownc.com. We will do it at all four services. That's coming up on May 12th, which is Mother's Day, fellas. Write it down. Now, on May 16th is a Thursday. One of our next steps here at Overflow is our partnership class. Some churches have members. We have partners because we ask you to partner with us. So if you've been attending for some time and you are ready to call Overflow Church home, we invite you to take our partnership class and find out what it means to partner with us. That's May 16th. That's a Thursday at 7 p.m. Pastor Hugo leads that. And then on May 19th, we are having Baptism Sunday. One of my favorite, amen. One of my favorite Sundays. If you are ready to take that next step and say, I want to follow Jesus and I want to tell the world, baptism is that next step for you. If you are interested in doing that, you can email us, connect at overflownc.com, and we'll get you signed up. And that'll be May 19th after the fourth service. Ooh, that's a lot going on. So church, let's continue with our worship. Another way that we worship here at Overflow is through the giving of our gifts. If you feel led to give today, we offer three different ways. You can go online to our website, you can download our app, or at the end of the service, our ushers will be at the back. But church, let's continue our worship. Go before him in prayer. Father God, this is the day that you have made. So Father, we're going to rejoice. We're going to give you all praise, glory, and honor. So Father, I pray now that as another act of worship, Lord, for everything you have given us, Father, we give back just a portion. So, Lord, it goes to continue the ministries happening here at Overflow Church. Father, happening all over the world where people's lives are forever changed because they're hearing the gospel message. So, Father, I pray you bless gift and giver today. Lord, I pray over the rest of our services, be over Pastor Brandon as he brings a powerful word, Father, of following you. So, Lord, I pray that you speak boldly through him. And, Father, we just, we love you. We love you. So, Father, we give you all praise, glory, and honor. It's in your Son, Jesus Christ's most precious name. Amen. Another in the fire Standing 
put our hands together. He's greatly to be praised. Just lift up the name of Jesus. Oh, we magnify you, Jesus. The song said, pour it out, pour it out, pour it out. We worship you, Lord, the name above all names. There's no one like you, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. So good to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Anybody thankful for Jesus in the room today? His saving power, his redeeming power. Amen. Look at your neighbor, tell him you're glad to see him this morning in church. Tell him, tell him you know that God has favored their life because he put them beside you. Come on. Come on, tell him. He's a God of favor because he let you sit with me today. Amen. Well, it's good to see you. You look good. You sound good. Uh, if you have your Bibles, if you would grab those and turn them to John chapter 10. If you have your physical Bible. If you... Uh, <clears throat> If not, we're going to put it on the screen. And if you have your phone, you can use your phone as well. Uh, It's good to be here in the house of the Lord this morning. I have a couple of things I want to touch on uh, before I jump into the message. So if you'll have your Bibles ready at John 10, we'll we'll go from there. Uh, The first thing I'd like to say is unless you you don't have a TV or you 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 live under a rock, then you... you, uh, you know what's going on over in the Middle East with the, the drones and the, the rockets and all of that. And um, I just want to say and, and declare that um, we're still pro-Israel and we still stand with the people of Israel. That's what the Bible instructs us to do. It doesn't matter how many missiles or how many uh, armies rise up against uh, the Israelites or the children of Israel, um, Jerusalem. Because greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. And if God be for us, who could be against us? And if we were smart, we would support and ally and partner with them. And so what I want to do today is I just want to pray for Israel and Jerusalem and for our nation. And that our leaders would make the right decision uh, and the best decision. I'm going to ask you to pray. And we just took a little bit of time out of each service today. And we're going to pray for them. And uh, I'd like to read from Scripture Uh, Psalms 122, starting in verse 6, it says, Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my family and friends, I will say, peace be with you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. Verse 6, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. So will you join me for a few moments this morning as we just pray over that nation and those people? Because those are God's people. And um, the Lord said, when you bless them, I will bless you. And I want to be on the, the side that God blesses. Amen. Not the other side. So let's just pray this morning. Will you join me together? Father, we lift up your name. We lift up the name of Jesus. We pray for Jerusalem. We pray for the peace of Israel. God, we recognize from Scripture that what's happening has been foretold. And while nobody knows the day nor the hour, God, you said we can tell by the signs that we see. And so, God, may we run the race you've called us to run until we see the second coming of the Lord. God, I pray that you would give peace over those families and those people. God, I pray specifically for our leaders that they would stand with Israel and stand by Israel. And God, that we would, we would stand in the gap with them and pray and believe and fight with them. God, we want to be blessed by you. We want to honor what you honor. We want to call sacred what you call sacred. And uh, so, God, we ask for you to give our, our leaders wisdom and guidance on the decisions they need to make. God, we pray for the military families that are fighting, that are in the midst of what's going on, that are taking orders, that are going, going where they say go and doing what they say do on both sides. God, we just pray that your hand, your sovereign hand of power would rest on them today, right now in this moment. Be with those men and those women who are fighting, who are on the front lines. God, we pray for protection. We pray for peace. And God, while we may not physically be able to be there, I thank you that prayer knows no limit on distance. And so God, right now we stand in the gap through prayer with millions and millions of Christians 
Christians all over the world, God, we, we tether our hearts with theirs and we pray. And God, we pray for your, an outpouring of your spirit. God, until we see your face, God, we pray for revival. We pray for redemption. God, let it start right here in our own heart. And God, we're going to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And all God's people said, amen. 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 It's a big deal. It's a big deal. Um, and and it, it should not discourage you, although it can be discouraging, um, because if you've, if you've read the good book, you know, you know we win in the end, and God is in control, and it's our job to stand in the gap and to pray and believe. Um, so uh, another thing that happened that was interesting on a different subject, so um, I, somebody called our church, and we get a lot of calls, but this one was a little more special, and um, they left us a voicemail, and I asked the team, I said, can we play that on Sunday for our people to hear, just because I want you to understand that um, most ministry happens outside the four walls of this church. Let me say that again. Most ministry happens outside the four walls of this church, and you never know who you're going to run into or who you're going to meet and, and how things are going to how things are going to play out and how God will line you up with people. So just take a listen to this recording. This was a phone call we got just a few weeks back. Monday, March 25th, time 1.26 p.m. Um, just wanted to tell you something neat that happened over the weekend. Um, I'm, I live in Colorado. Uh, I was on a flight to Raleigh. And sitting beside me was a young lady by the name of Amanda. Uh, she works, she attends Overflow Church. And um, she asked uh, if I was a Christian and then if she could pray with me on our flight. And it was just so heartfelt, so real. And I uh, just want to let you guys know that you are doing something right. Um, and it was just very impressive. Anyway, thank you so much. Bye-bye. How cool is that? How cool is that? You know, <laughs> you get enough criticism in other calls that we like to highlight the good ones and say, check this out. We are doing something right. <laughs> and so um, I just wanted, I just thought that was super encouraging because, you know, we get emails or phone calls and good, bad, and ugly sometimes, but, but um, it's good to hear for you to hear that because never underestimate the power of a moment and the people God will put in your path. And so, um, Amanda, we appreciate you. We love you. Way to be the hands and feet of Jesus on an airplane from Colorado to Raleigh. Um, you never know. I believe in destiny and divine moments, and God puts those together and orchestrates those. So today I want to talk to you from John chapter 10. Um, and if you're looking for a title, I, I like to give a title just because I feel like they stick sometimes. Um, I, I've titled this Walking with the Good Shepherd. And so today I want to talk to you about the importance of walking with uh, the Lord. And so in John chapter 10, starting in verse 14, I just want to read two verses. This is Jesus talking. He says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. Now we know by this scripture and what is to come that when he says I lay my life down, he was talking about how he would be crucified. And, uh, but he also talks about how he is the good shepherd. And I want to talk to you for a moment about walking with the good shepherd. So God's people are referred to in scripture as sheep. And Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. In Psalms 100 in verse 3, the, your Bible says, we are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Now, it's interesting to me because God could have called us or equated us to anything. He could have said, you are my bears because you are bold and you are strong. He could have said, you are my lions because you're courageous and you're, you're bold and you have bravery. And, you know, he could have said, you are, you are an eagle. And he, I know he said in Isaiah, we'll mount up on wings like eagles, but he never said we are eagles. But he could have said, we are eagles because we're majestic and we're, you know, we're, we're beautiful and, and all these things. But instead, God calls us sheep. Now, we're going to learn a little bit about sheep, which is what makes this a little more interesting. 
First of all, sheep are very interesting animals. Did you know that a sheep is pretty much defenseless? Uh, it has really no way to defend itself, so much so that one of the things a sheep is mindful of is trying to keep their distance from anything that might be a threat, and being that they're defenseless, almost everything is a threat to a sheep, okay? So sheep are defenseless. Come on, how many are so thankful? I am a sheep. We can tweet that today. <laughs> Number two, they're not the brightest animals, and they are very needy. Now, come on, somebody say, I got some family just like that. They're not the brightest, and they are very, very needy. Sheep are very needy. Sheep can hardly tell the difference between luscious green grass and grass that's infested with poison. They can hardly tell the difference. Sheep are, by nature, followers, and so this is true. Sheep are followers by nature, and so if there is a lead sheep and lead sheep walks off a cliff, the other sheep will simply follow the sheep off the cliff. Because they are by nature followers. Which is interesting because sheep are directionless and so they wander and they are completely dependent upon the shepherd in which they form a special bond. It's interesting that if we don't have a special bond or a bond with our good shepherd, aren't we prone to wander and fall and find ourselves in places? How in the world did I get here? It's interesting. So if you look back over your life, the times you've made mistakes, the times you've drifted, the times you've wondered, the times you've made the wrong decision, I'm not a betting man, but if I was, I would say it was probably because you were not following the good shepherd. You might have been following people. You might have been following friends. You might have been following culture or the world. But one thing's for sure, if you were in the wrong place and you fail and you messed up, there's a good chance that you are not listening to the voice of the good shepherd. And he has a voice, by the way, because Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. So I want to talk to you about the four, the four benefits of following the good shepherd. So just so you know, today, in today's message, when I say good shepherd or Jesus, those are interchangeable. All right? So number one, the good shepherd provides. The good shepherd leads the sheep into places where they can feed on the best grass because the good shepherd knows when and where the sheep need to rest. Can I just tell you that God knows when you need rest? God knows when his children or his sheep are restless. Life is crazy. The kids are turning your hair gray or, or it's coming out, one of the two. Uh, work is crazy. The boss man's on your nerves. Uh, things are, are crazy at home. And, and, and God is so personal enough that he sees and he knows when you need rest or you find yourself restless. That's why Jesus, the good shepherd, in another verse says, come to me all, all means everybody, who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. It's interesting that he says weary and burdened. Weary speaks to being tired and worn out. Burden speaks to being heavy and like a weight is on you. Have you ever noticed that when you're tired or you're worn out, it's usually because there is a weight that's on you, a responsibility. And so notice the formula to find rest, according to the good shepherd, is not to do more. It's not to ignore it. It's not to quit. It's not even necessarily to do rest. The formula, according to Jesus, is to come unto me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Could it be we're looking for rest and satisfaction in the wrong places? Jesus said, come unto me. David said in Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. David was not saying you'll never have a need in your life. What David was saying was every need will always be met with the one who knows what my need is before my need presents itself in my life. He will make sure I have what I need. He was speaking from a position of trusting God to supply whatever his needs are. That's the God the good shepherd we serve. So, so he was trusting God to supply his needs, starting with salvation. Let me encourage you that the same God who gives us saving grace is the same God who gives us sustaining grace. 
God doesn't just have the power to save you. God has the power to sustain you. God saves you and God will sustain you. What I want to say is that God does not always deliver you out of what you are in. God does not always deliver you out of the season you're walking through. Sometimes God will sustain you in the season until he gets out of you what he needs to get out and he puts in you what he needs to put in. And so God will sustain you. He won't always deliver you. Remember the three Hebrew boys that were thrown in the fire? God didn't deliver them out of the fire. God just said, I'm going to show everybody else I'm with you in the fire. He didn't save them. He sustained them. And when they came out, they didn't smell like smoke, look like smoke, look like smoke, or smell like smoke, act like they had been in the fire because God was with them and he sustained them through what they were going through. God's still doing the same thing for his children today, church. He's still sustaining. And so sometimes God doesn't deliver you out of what you go through. He'll sustain you through it. But you have to follow the good shepherd. David knew that God was his provider because the good shepherd provides. And if for some reason he had a desire that had not been met, a promise he had not yet seen fulfilled, a need that he had in his life, then David knew by saying, God, uh, the Lord is my shepherd, I lack nothing. He knew that God was not finished working in him and on him, and God would bring about the provision he needed in his life because Jehovah Jireh, God is our provider. He's the good shepherd. And the good shepherd knows what the sheep need. Philippians 1 and 6, he who began a good work in me is faithful to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. Just because, here's what I want to say. God, the good shepherd, Jesus, is our provider. So, what I want to say is this. Just because you don't have an answer doesn't mean you stop following Jesus. Just because you don't understand or have an answer doesn't mean you walk away from, 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 from God or walk away from the good shepherd. And can I just tell you, I've learned to not only just preach from head knowledge, but heart knowledge. Let me tell you the difference. Head knowledge is what you read in a book. Heart knowledge is what you've walked through and you then impart and share with other people. I have often learned that when I can't find the answer, I have to go to the answer. And sometimes the only answer is Jesus is my source. Jesus is my provider. Jesus is my good shepherd. I don't have all this figured out, but he does. I don't understand what's going on here, but he does. And when I don't understand this, I trust him. When I can't trace his hand, I have to trust his heart because his heart's good and I know his character and I know what kind of God he is because I see his track record in my life. And I trust him. You have to trust him. Keep showing up, keep believing, keep praying. Number two, the good shepherd not only provides, but the good shepherd guides. He's a guide. Our faith journey will require us to trust God where he guides. And can I tell you, where God guides, God provides. Where the good shepherd guides, the good shepherd provides. What you need to understand is that what the enemy can't stop, he will try to delay. And so when the, the enemy knows that he can't stop the, 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 the hand of God on your life, the enemy can't stop what God wants to do in your life, but he can delay it. And he has different tactics and different means and different ways that he does that because the enemy would like nothing more than to lead you down the wrong path that's paved with wrong decisions and decisions have consequences. Can I let you in on something? Yes, God forgives us of our sins, but our sins still have consequences. Yes, God redeems. Yes, God delivers. But there are consequences to, to the decisions that we make. If I just live my life however I want to live and, and just don't take care of my body and, and I don't take care of this temple and all of that good stuff and then I get to the end of my life and my health is failing, yes, God still redeems and I may go to heaven, but the consequences of my actions from the previous 30 years I'm living with in the latter 30 years of my life. There are still consequences to the decisions that we make. And that's why when the devil can't stop what God wants to do, he wants to delay what God wants to do in your life. Because decisions have a ripple effect. Sometimes immediately, sometimes further down the road. I think about the little girl who was eating ice cream. Eating some ice cream. 
And she said, look, I can eat all the ice cream I want. Nothing's happening. And she got another scoop and nothing's happening. And the next week she's eating all this ice cream in which we would say to her, just hang on. The ice cream will catch up to you eventually. Nothing's happening right now. But eventually something is going to happen. You're going to find some extra, some, some extra pounds and, you know, those those, the cheeseburgers and pizza and all that good stuff. You may not see nothing right now, but eventually something's going to happen because decisions have a ripple effect, sometimes immediately, sometimes further down the road. So here's what I'm trying to tell you. The good shepherd guides and everywhere the, the devil has a counterfeit for everything God wants to do in your life. The devil has a counterfeit. What do I mean by that? Let's, let's think about that for a minute. When God wants to lead you to the right people, the enemy will try to send the wrong people in your life. Young people, hear me. It matters who you hang out with because it will directly affect your destiny. Adults, it matters who you hang out with because it will directly affect your destiny. Amen. Can I tell you, that never changes. Who you hang out with, if you want to, there's an old saying, if you show me your friends, I'll show you your future. Who are you hanging out with? Because when God wants to do something in your life, he'll send the right people, and when the devil wants to destroy you, he'll send the wrong people. God wants to lead you to the right places. The enemy wants to lead you to the wrong places. God wants you, when God wants you to move, the enemy wants to delay He'll do that through discouragement. He'll do that through doubt, disbelief. He'll use all kinds of things. That's why the scripture says God has not given us a spirit of fear, but power and love and a sound mind. Fear will rob you of the destiny God wants to do in your life. The thing that God wants to do, the devil will try to delay that. I, I, I am a living testimony of that. Off the script, called at a young age to preach, 10, 11, 12, 13 years old. I knew that ministry and preaching, that was my passion. I ran for so long because I was, ironically, I was scared to stand up in front of people and preach. Scared to death. Said, you got the wrong guy. What was the devil doing? He was delaying, trying to delay what God had destined. And thank God he can restore the years that the canker worm and the locust ate up because he's a God of restoration. But what I'm trying to tell you, if you follow the good shepherd, you can save a lot of time. He don't have to redeem because you gave him the time and he blessed it. So, so the devil wants nothing more than to delay, which is why you have to be in tune with the good shepherd while he guides your steps. The same God who will lead you is the same God who will help you and lead you out of the wrong places. Some paths look good to the sheep and would kill them if they took that path. It would lead off a cliff or it would lead off of a, a crevice or into a pit or into a ravine. And, and they look good, but, but they lead to death. I think about Proverbs 14 and 12. There is a way that appears right, but in the end it leads to death. If you look at this world and this culture and, and all this going on, the attraction and how just it's a whole nother topic, but, but the way that society is trying to, to really brainwash people and brainwash kids, if you look at that, it, 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 will, it, it, it will try to you have to be this way to fit in. You have to do that to fit in. Well, Jesus said you're not supposed to fit in. You're supposed to stand out. And so, and so you have to be led by the shepherd because if you're not led by the shepherd, you'll be led by something else. And so there is a way that appears right, but in the end it leads to death. Some paths in your life that look good will kill you. I don't mean physically. It physically can, but there are, there are decisions you can make that will kill your joy. It'll kill your peace. It'll kill your passion. There's certain decisions and paths you'll take that it'll kill those things in your life. And then there's paths that God used that you think are going to kill you that he says, I'm getting something out of you you didn't know was put in you. I'm convinced that one of the reasons God doesn't show us the whole picture is because if he showed us the things we were going to have to go to to get to where he's called us, if I can just say it how I want to say it, we'd be like, you can have that. I'm good on that. <laughs> There's been times I've said that many a times. Now, do I got a witness in here? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Thank God he didn't show me the whole path because I don't know if I would have chose that path for my life. 
But I trusted the good shepherd, and because I trusted him, he hasn't let me down yet. He hasn't failed me yet. In fact, he's still using me. He's still using the hiccups. Come on, he's still using things in my life that I didn't realize because he's the good shepherd, and he knows what his sheep need. So trust him. Trust him. We got to move. Psalm 37. The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. The shepherd loves the sheep so much that he'll find the one who was wandered down the wrong path. I love that. And you know, you don't appreciate being the one that the shepherd, the Bible says the, the, the shepherd will leave the 99 and, and, and track down the one. You don't appreciate the one until you are the one. And I'm so thankful that the shepherd doesn't say, I got 99 more. What's one sheep? I got, I got, I, matter of fact, I got four more flocks. There's a hundred in them. What's, what's one sheep? I'm so thankful that the shepherd says, no, I'll leave the 99 who are in good hands and I'll chase after the one who's lost and bleeding and crying for help. I think the church could learn a lot from that because there are people that are lost and bleeding and crying for help and they're not in this room this morning. And they're lost and bleeding and crying for help may not sound like bleeding and a cry for help. It comes out in the lifestyle that they live. When they're running from this pain to that pain, from this lover to that lover, bouncing around from, from this place to that place. And what is it from this drug to that drug, from this drink to that drink? What is it? That's them bleeding and crying for help, saying, I'm looking for something that will satisfy. And the shepherd says, I'll leave the 99 who are in good hands to go find the one that's, that's lost and lonely. And by the way, he says, you're my hands and feet, so won't you help me do that? You're my hands and feet. When he finds that sheep, can I tell you something else the church could learn from? The shepherd? The shepherd doesn't despise the sheep. The shepherd doesn't say, you're stupid, how did you get here? The shepherd doesn't beat them over the head for the mistakes they made. No, the shepherd reaches down with his gentle hands or his staff and pulls the sheep up and carries it back to the flock. I think the church could learn a lot from the shepherd because if there's a hope for the world, it's the local church, it's the body of Christ, it's the people in this room. And we could learn by not looking down on other people because they sin differently than I do. And the good shepherd says, I'll meet you where you're at, but I'm not going to leave you where you're at. That's the gospel. Jesus met us where we're at. He says, but I'm not going to leave you where you're at. And that's what the good shepherd does. Anytime he's redeemed me or restored me or picked me back up, he's never beat me over the head and made me feel foolish. It's always been a voice of, yes, conviction. Conviction leads to repentance and change. And he says, you're better than this. There's more for you. Why are you settling? Why are you, why are you settling for less than what I've provided for you? It's a voice of love and compassion, and that's the shepherd reaching down and picking you up when you've made a mistake, saying, let's get up and go again. What I'm saying, and, you know, you know the, the shepherds would take that sheep, they're 100 or 125 pounds, and he'd throw them over his shoulders and carry them back to the flock. And looking around this room, we, we're a little more than 100 and 125 pounds. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but you know what? makes me appreciate how much weight the good shepherds carried on my behalf spiritually speaking first peter 2 24 through 25 he personally carried our sins in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right by his wounds you are healed once you were like sheep who wandered away but now you have turned to your shepherd the guardian of your soul so he provides he guides. Number three, the good shepherd is present. This is a big one. The shepherd would literally sleep out in the fields with the sheep. The shepherd would sleep in the fields with the sheep. That tells me that when a sheep goes missing, when a person goes missing, can, can I just give you the, the hard, honest truth here? Okay. Um, when the sheep go missing, it wasn't the shepherd's fault. It was the sheep's fault. The shepherd never left. The sheep always leave. 
Sheep wander. Let's just break it down. People wander. People leave. People get lost. People find themselves in places they have no business being. What I'm trying to tell you, see, you need a pastor that won't just tell you what you want to hear, what you need to hear. What I'm trying to tell you is that God will never leave you. If your relationship with God is not what it should be, it's not God's fault, it's your fault. The good shepherd never leaves, but he will find you. He'll find you in the club. (laughs) He'll find you at the bar. He'll find you at the wrong place, at the wrong time, with the wrong person. David said, if I make my bed in hell, you're there, God. In other words, I cannot escape your presence because when you're marked by the shepherd, you always know his voice no matter what other people are saying and whatever else is happening in your life. You notice that? It's not God who left. One of the most beautiful things about the shepherd is that the shepherd will go through the rough places. I love that song by Hillsong. There's a verse that says, you trace my steps through all my failure Pick me up and walk me out the other side. That's what the good shepherd does for the sheep. He don't leave them out. He don't forget about them. That's the gospel. That's that's why we're here. That's why we do what we do. An old Scottish preacher named John McNeil told that during his childhood, he had to walk a long distance home every evening. And his route led through a forest with a large ravine. Reports had said that wild animals and gangs of robbers were often seen in that area. And great fear would strike um, his heart as he walked the path each night. He recalled one night it was especially dark and gloomy, dreary. But I was aware that something or someone was moving slowly and quietly towards me. I was sure it was a robber. When the voice rang out, its eerie tone at first struck my heart with fear. I thought, I'm finished. Then came the second call. This time I could hear the voice saying, John, John, is that you? It was my father. He had known of my fear and he had come to meet me in my darkest part of my journey home. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for a good shepherd that doesn't just provide, doesn't just guide, but is present with me through even my darkest seasons in life. Through even the dreary places in my journey that I walk, I can't see clearly. I don't understand. And yet he says, I don't just guide, I don't just protect, I don't just provide, but I'm present in your life. I'm present. And I close with this, number four. The good shepherd provides, the good shepherd guides, the good shepherd's present, and the good shepherd protects. A shepherd... um, in, in the Bible days, had a rod and a staff, and they, were, they served two different purposes. That's why David said, your rod and your staff, or thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. They have, they have two purposes. Why does the rod and the staff comfort David? Well, the staff was used for correction for the sheep. The shepherd would use the staff to draw the sheep closer, to prod, to direct, to guide. If they fell in a crevice or a hole, he could use the, the, the bent end of the, of the staff to reach down and, and pull the sheep up if he had that style of staff. He could use it for leverage. The shepherd would reach down and, and draw them up. But then the rod, while the staff served as correction, the rod served as protection. If a lion or a wolf or a bear or, or an animal or a predator came up, the shepherd would use the rod to defend the sheep and fight for the sheep, which is why Jesus said, I'm the good shepherd. I'm not just the shepherd because some shepherds, if this gets bad enough, will run away. But Jesus said, I'm not running away. I've come to stay. And the way he came to stay is when he died on the cross and he went back to the Father, he sent the Holy Spirit to live with you, to live in you, to reside in you, to take up space in you. He came to stay. And so the rod of protection and the staff of correction, 
David said, they comfort me. And anytime God corrects his children, let me just say this, and I'm almost done. Matter of fact, if, if you'll stand with me, we're going to close in prayer. Anytime God corrects his children, it is to get us on the right path to go and be at the place he's leading us to so that we can fulfill the, the personal calling that he's put on our life. And everybody under the sound of my voice has a personal calling. Some manner, some means, some way in which God wants to use you. Somehow. And I'm just telling you, the only way to fully know what that is is to follow the good shepherd. Listen for his voice as he guides you. And if you find yourself in a pit, sometimes you get in a pit because of your own choices. Sometimes you get in a pit because of other people's choices. Wouldn't you say that's fair? That's right. Know that the good shepherd has not forgotten about you. He'll bring correction. He'll bring correct co conviction. He provides. He guides. He protects. He's present. So, I want to I want to close today and I want to ask a couple of questions. With every head bowed and every eye closed today, if you're here and you would say, Pastor, I don't have a personal relationship with Jesus. I'm, I'm lost. I'm broken. Um, I've not surrendered my life. Something is your master. Someone is your master. And you would say, I have not surrendered my life personally. It's personal faith. It's not mama's faith or daddy's faith or grandma's faith. Or gran it's per it has to become personal. I said last week, it'll never become powerful until it becomes personal. So if you're here and you would say, I don't have a personal relationship with Jesus, maybe you're online, would you just lift your hand and say, pray for me. Pray for me. If you're online, just say, pray for me in the chat. Here's my second question. Maybe there's some people here and you feel like you're in a pit or you fell off a cliff, figuratively speaking. Maybe you would say, I need to trust where God's guiding me because it doesn't necessarily feel good and I'm not sure exactly where he's leading me, but I got to trust. I feel like I'm talking to some people. I got to trust where God's guiding me right now. Maybe some of you need to trust that the shepherd is present right now in where he's guiding you. And the enemy's convinced you that he's forgotten about you or that you're overlooked. You need to trust that he's present, that he provides, that he guides, that he guards. And if you would say, there's, there's, you're, you're talking to me, there's an area in my life, whatever that looks like, of all those things I just said, if that resonates with you, would you just boldly lift your hand and say, pray for me? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to trust where he guides. I'm going to trust that not only does he guide, but he goes with me. I'm going to trust that not only does he guide and not only does he go with me, but he provides. He provides where he guides. I'm going to trust that. So here's what I want to do. Uh, right now, if you lifted your hand, would you do me a favor? Would you boldly step out? We're going to respond. We're going to have some time at the altar. Come boldly step out. Come stand. Come kneel. Let me, let the prayer team, let somebody lay hands on you. And we're just going to agree with you. Come on. Will you step now? Somebody break the ice. Thank you. Somebody else. Somebody else. We're not here to embarrass anybody. Just jump in. If you feel that pull, that tug on your heart, just jump in. This is not about me. This is not about even this space right here. This is about you responding to what the Holy Spirit is saying in your heart and in your spirit. Come on, I'll give you another minute. If you feel that draw, will you step out? If you don't want to step out, will you make your seat your altar? Will you just ask the Lord, the Good Shepherd, to search you? Tell Him you're going to trust Him. He wants to hear your voice. Tell Him in your own way. Tell him what you're walking through. 
my prayer team, come lay hands. Pastors, leaders, if you're on the prayer team, the altar team, come lay hands. We're going to sing. We're going to sing it. And if you feel a draw, I want you to step out. I want you to step out. Be bold. Be bold. Come on, let's worship. Let's worship. head bowed and every eye closed this morning wanna I want to lead you in a prayer and I'm gonna ask everybody to pray this prayer with me I like to say it like this if heaven throws a party for one soul we want to send the invitation out and so if you're here you're watching online and you need to make a decision today we're gonna pray this prayer with you I'm gonna ask you to repeat after me I'm gonna ask everybody to join in Everybody say this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, here I stand. I need you. I admit I can't do this on my own. I'm helpless. Forgive me of my sins. I surrender. I receive your grace by faith. I trust you. I trust your word. I trust your spirit with my life and my destiny. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for seeing me. Thank you for pursuing me. I surrender in Jesus' name. Now, Father, we give you all glory for every and anything that's accomplished in your name. We thank you for the word. I pray that we would follow closely this week, the Good Shepherd. Give us ears to hear His voice. Give us eyes to see His hand. And most of all, give us a heart to trust Your plan. God, we ask for Your hand. We ask for Your guidance. We ask for Your direction. We ask for Your protection. 
We thank you for your presence. And God, we're going to trust you in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Amen. Put your hands together one more time. We love you. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday. Have a great rest of your day.